Hello everyone, bringing you a video today looking at this. Now this is a 1969 dated Australian Special Air Service Regiment Beret. Now Australia's Special Air Service Regiment was formed in 1964 and this is from sort of relatively early days but the latter days of the Vietnam War, that period, obviously a very chequered part of the Special Air Service Regiment's history. Talk about a little bit about the history behind this because obviously the colour and everything else does have its own history with the, the British SAS, of course, going going back. So obviously the SAS during the Second World War initially introduced a sand-coloured beret with a, a black shield embroidered badge, uh, slightly different to this, but this sort of replicates that, having the black shield backing. That was the initial design of beret and beret badge that the, the SAS uh, adopted. On returning to Britain, the SAS were... Uh, as airborne forces were essentially forced to change over to the the maroon beret or red beret as it would have been referred to at the time the airborne beret which has been considered in previous videos and when britain reformed the sas this was initially the beret used again the airborne beret the maroon beret in the latter part of the 1950s there was a decision to return to the original beige or sand colored beret and that's essentially what's worn today. It carried on right the way through from that point. So returning back to the original colour of beret, which had been worn in the early uh, days of the SAS during the Second World War. The colour varies very slightly. That's an interesting story in and of itself, which might be talked about in the future. In terms of the Australian side of this, in the 1950s, again, there was a move to form a, a special air service unit within the Australian Army. And this started out as the Special Air Service Company in 1957 who adopted the airborne beret, the maroon beret initially. And this would bear the corps cap badge. So the, if you were an infantryman, the corps of infantry cap badge, or if you were from another corps, you'd wear your specific corps cap badge. And this was the case right the way up until 1965. And obviously the Special Air Service Regiment was formed in 1964 to take over from the Special Air Service Company. And in 1965, a new headdress was introduced for regimental wear. And that's what we have here is this initial sand coloured version of the beret introduced for Australian use and as I say the, the shield behind the badge and so forth harkens back to the the origins of the SAS the original headdress which had been introduced during the Second World War by by Britain's SAS and these this particular design was worn through into the, the mid 1970s with the sand coloured sweat band and so forth and I believe it's at that point that it changed essentially to the type which is worn today um, so we're going to have a look at this in a little bit more detail, we'll get the close-ups of the cap badge, have a look at the interior, the labelling and so forth, and that's what we're going to do now. One thing to note just before we start looking at the details of this, although a regimental beret, in so far as this has the Special Air Service Regiment cap badge, etc, it is regiment specific, it's also important to note the beret does represent a qualification, so you have to be SAS qualified in order to wear this beret. So as said, this particular beret dates from 1969, and we can see that in the label in the side here bring that up to the camera Hopefully it'll focus there we go so you've got your name and number can be put on the label here you have the dd stamp for the defense department and then the date of 1969 on there the black lining to the beret here made of sort of i think a vicos fabric and then you have the manufacturer there obviously manufactured in victoria australia size seven and a quarter so a good generous size and then you have the sweatband is made of this khaki material and the actual draw cord itself or ribbon is again made of a slightly different but again a khaki material so the, the entire um, the entire body of the beret that you can see when you're wearing it is essentially a khaki or sand colour. Ventilation eyelets worked in here just stitched in rather than the metal eyelets that would be more typical on British berets of the time. You actually have an additional pair at the rear here not quite directly over the uh, the point where the, the tie is uh, comes out of the sweatband there, but uh, plenty of ventilation holes around the outside. And obviously this, a uh, good idea of the colour there in daylight. Definitely a beige colour. I think that's the official terminology in British use for the uh, the British SAS beret is, is officially termed beige, as I remember, but uh, certainly a, a tan or a beige colour. Then we have the cap badge here, which you can see which is fairly typical for SAS cap badges with the obviously the winged sword and then the who dares wins motto in the uh, scroll beneath as you can see there and this is obviously an anodized finish but the the sword is in silver it's a little difficult to tell in the, in the 
like perhaps the sword is silver and the wings and the scroll are more of a gold tone. So that's the berry itself. Uh, as I say, 1969, so a, a nice 60s example uh, of this. I'll turn it around, there we go. Nice 60s example of this, and this is the idea of this is obviously alongside, I now do also have a, a Royal New Zealand Infantry Regiment beret, and uh, obviously a, a slouch chat with period badge. The idea is at future events looking at Anzac kit in Vietnam, I'll be able to have a display of headdress, not that it was necessarily worn in the field, but it's nice to be able to display alongside mannequins showing what was worn in the field. So this will be going on a mannequin head at some point in the future for display alongside Anzac Vietnam kit. This particular design of beret also features quite strongly on Australian popular culture surrounding the Vietnam War, as they featured in the Odd Angry Shot, which of course is an Australian film following fictionalised members of the Special Air Service Regiment during service in Vietnam. So there we are. I do hope you found it interesting looking at that. Uh, an artefact, an, an item of clothing from an interesting period in the Special Air Service Regiment's history, obviously with service in Vietnam, obviously 1969, the latter days of the Vietnam War, but the the, re the service record of the Special Air Service Regiment in Vietnam is, is well re well recorded and, and certainly numerous interesting exploits, which you can, you can certainly find in information on online should you wish to go and look for that. And that's one re reason for showing this. This is an item I intend to display going forward when we put on future uh, Australian Hanzac uh, Vietnam displays. I'd like to have this on a mannequin head as part of the display, and uh, that's the intention. A big thank you to Kobe Peters, who helped me sort this out, who found this for me and, and sent it over to me. Very kind of you, Kobe. Uh, that was a little while ago in a previous unboxing video. But this is the sort of thing now, is obviously once, uh, once items have got into the collection and I've, I've had time, appear in videos looking at them in more detail that's the intention if you'd like to see more of that sort of thing going forward please do consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already and whether you're newly subscribing or you've previously subscribed please do make sure you hit the little bell the little notification button down below and that will of course alert you when i upload future videos if you really like my uploads and you would like to support the channel you can both patreon and paypal are linked down below and as ever a huge thank you to everybody who supports the channel using those two methods it's greatly appreciated as i always say if you'd like to follow the channel on social media, you can. Facebook, Instagram and Twitter are all linked down below. And if you'd like to get in touch but you don't really use social media, there is of course an email address down there as well. But that's everything for this video, so until next time, bye for now.